Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Seattle Mariners March to October here on MLB The Show 24. Currently, we set at 23 and 21, still in the thick of things here early on in the season, as we kind of do need to step up our play if we want to be playoff contenders here in this March to October. We jump into this game, down 2-1, to one, two outs here in the top of the eighth, runs on first and second, and none other than Julio Rodriguez up to bat. And we've been horrific with him so far in this series. And he lines that first pitch right to third base. And they get the out at second. So Julio Rodriguez there in a clutch situation. Uh, possibly tie it up there. But we do not get the job done. Baltimore still leads here 2-1 to one in the bottom of the eighth inning. And Adley Rushman is going to lead it off here. Rushman onto a tremendous start here. 932 OPS. Average well over 300. So we do have Greg Gregory Santos out there on the mound. And let me see. I guess we'll warm up the newly acquired Colin Poche. Or Poche. I I looked it up and I, I found out how to pronounce it correctly. And it has escaped me. As it has been a few days since we got it going here. Santos gets Rutschman to ground out to first there. And the Mariners on track here. In the bottom of the eighth. Now Anthony Santander up. A budding star there. Great hitter for the Orioles right now. And Santos gets that high strike there. 99 mile per hour fastball. Now the 0-1 to Santander. And a slider hangs right over the middle of the plate. But luckily that's just fouled off. Now the 0-2. Slider way inside. Santos trying to get him chasing. And the one two, he swings at, uh, chases a low changeup as Garver collects it and fires to France there for the second out of the inning. Good work here by Santos to start the eighth. And now Gunnar Henderson, look at his numbers. Even better than Adley Rutschman. OPS just five short of a thousand, batting 340 so far. These Orioles off to a tremendous start, as you'd expect. That change up just low of the zone for a ball. 0-1 slider misses. That fastball gets in there at 100. Now 2-1 count to Henderson with two outs here in the eighth. Another fastball. Up in the zone goes for a strike. Now the 2-2 to Gunnar Henderson. And that changeup misses. So full count here with Austin Hayes on deck for the O's. And another high fastball. That one fouled off by Henderson. So we'll do it again. And that one he's just going to look at. Too quick to react on that 100 mile per hour fastball. And Santos, good work there. As the Mariners still just down one run with three outs left. And here we go. Baltimore going to bring in their closer. As they lead here 2-1 in a close game between two potential AL playoff squads. So I'm here to slam the door at Oriole Park. And the Mariners, we need a late rally here. Felix Batista, 15 out of 17. And a very good strikeout right there. Mitch Garver going to lead us off. And we haven't seen much of him, but it looks like he's out there starting for Cal Raleigh in this one. And that's just too fast, 102 miles per hour. And Batista tied for first in the AL and saves, looking to take sole possession with three outs here. The 0-1. Another swing and a miss. Garver, you got to... When he's throwing 102, you kind of have to sell out for that fastball. And Garver just ugly on that slider. 1-2 count after a slider misses away. And that just finds the corner. 100 miles per hour fastball on the corner as Mitch Garver goes down looking. That'll bring up Luke Raley. Maybe having the best season of any hitter so far. Maybe along with J.P. Crawford. Who was up to 12 home runs last time we saw him. And that slider just finds the corner, outside corner of the plate. Now 0-1 to Luke Rayleigh. That splitter is not going to find the zone. Now 1-1. One, one. 
Splitter misses down. Down and away now. 2-1. A hitter's count for Luke Raley. Swing and a miss on the high heat. And now 2-2. Two -two. And Raley's chasing that one in the dirt. Ugly swing there. Batista just too imposing right now. That splitter. You either got to sell out for the fastball or the slider. And then he mixes that splitter in there. And just no excuse for that swing. But it happens. It's the show. You get you get caught chasing some ugly ones in this game. Now Jorge Polanco, Seattle's last hope. And he swings and misses at that first pitch fastball on the inside. The 0-1 now to Polanco. And that fastball pretty much in the same spot. And a quick 0-2 count. This is where Batista probably goes with the splitter or the slider, right? And he sticks with the heat as Polanco just fouls that one off. So we'll do it again. Seattle down to their last strike. And that fastball inside as Polanco lives to see another pitch. Is that going to be called? Okay, so he checks the swing there on the high, on the high heat. That would have been an ugly way to go down in this one. So now a 2-2 to Polanco. And he fouls off that slider. Working the at-bat here. Now the seventh pitch upcoming. And a swing and a miss. A fastball right down the middle. And a 101 mile per hour fastball is just too hard to catch up to. As Brian Wu takes the loss in this one. Falls to not, uh, two and five. And we're going to get a snowflake in this one. We had a chance there with Julio Rodriguez. But then once the Baltimore Orioles brought in their closer... Batista was just too strong. We couldn't get anything going there. So key moment. We're going to get the fail on this one. Unfortunately. And as it's been all series. We get the flame going. We get on a hot streak. And then right away it goes cold. We need a lot more sustainability here. So I think we just got swept there by Baltimore. And then I think we just split the first two against New York. And we are going to get a call up option. And I said this last episode we got a trade offer for Sam Haggerty, and I don't know why he wasn't just already on the roster. Very good numbers there in AAA. Six homers over 300 batting average and 894 OPS. Very good left handed, or uh, very good hitter against left handed pitchers. A utility man can play anywhere on the field essentially, and he brings good speed as well. So we're definitely going to call him up and send down one of these bad relievers. So yeah, just we're going to send down Trent Thornton, 13.5 ERA in 7.1 innings. And that's just not going to fly. So congratulations on calling up Sam Haggerty. I th he's not going to start at this point for us. Although Urias, I mean, he hasn't really been doing much. Kind of getting going a little bit. Decent in the field. So I don't know. Maybe we'll throw. How is he against lefties? He is better against lefties than he is against righties. I was going to think about maybe throwing Haggerty in there. But we're not going to. We're just going to leave it for now. So we do split the first two against the Yankees. And now we are going to get a player lock game with Sam Haggerty. And here we go from Yankee Stadium. Sam Haggerty on to make his season debut in this player lock game as we take on the Yankees. They're 29-21 and 21 among the best teams in the AL as we have now fallen one game below 500. We expect Sam Haggerty to bring a pretty good impact to this team as he can contribute in a plethora of ways with his speed, his good hitting against lefties, and his versatility in the field. And now we'll see him on batting second in the lineup here against Garrett Cole. And he's first pitch swinging at that slider. And he's going to swing and miss at that one. 41 contact, 33 power against righties. So I would not expect too much from Sam Haggerty offensively in this one. I'm not sure why. They would throw him second in the lineup. Does uh, work a, work to count a little bit there after first uh, first two pitches were strikes. Now one two count to Sam Haggerty. Good eye there as that changeup misses away from the plate. Now all knotted up at two. And he just watches that fastball. Ay ay ay! Just couldn't really react to that one. That. Fastball from Garrett Cole kind of paints the edge of the plate there. 
Haggerty starting at shortstop in this one for J.P. Crawford. There's a ground ball. And just through the diving, the diving Sam Haggerty as a run is going to score. So a rough start here. I think that was yeah, that was uh, Juan Soto who poked that one through as the Yankees jump up 1-0 here. Now Haggerty back out there. Glaber Torres lines one to first, and that's booted by Haggerty. And Torres beats that one out. I don't know if you could have had a worse start here for Haggerty. They won't give him the error, though, although I think that definitely should have been an E6. So now 0 for 1, Sam Haggerty back out there as he tries to avenge his opening strikeout. That one inside. So 1 0 count now with Ty France on second. And a runner on first as well. One out away. One away here in the top of the third. And a swing and a miss on that fastball right down the middle from Garrett Cole. And that fastball finds the zone in the upper corner. So now another one two count to Sam Haggerty. Swing and a miss on that slider. They just did not throw us in a good position here. Haggerty strikes out for the second time late on that slider, and I don't think we really knew what to do with that at all. Now Yankees up 3-1 to one here in the bottom of the third. As that one's grounded to Haggerty at short. That's Austin Wells, the Yankee catcher. And Haggerty records the out. So finally we get something productive going in the field. But now at the plate, we need to get on base. Same inning now. That'll bring up DJ LeMahieu with a runner on first. LeMahieu grounds that to short. Could be a two ball here. Haggerty flips to second. And they'll get the man at first as well. So double play there in the bottom of the third as LeMahieu grounds into the double. And some good plays there by Haggerty in the field, but still 0 for 2 at the plate with two strikeouts. Now Haggerty back to, back to try and make something happen here. Garrett Cole still on the mound as the Yankees now up 8 to 2. And we'll just lay down the bunt, but unfortunately that goes foul. So now the 0-1. That one inside. 1-1 one, one count now to Haggerty. I don't think he's been ahead in that, in that at bat all game. And that one, he finally gets some decent wood on, but that's grounded to second as he's now 0 for 3. Now the top of the eighth, Yankees up 10 to 3. Sam Haggerty back up. And he swings out a first pitch fastball, fouled away. And that fastball in there. Another 0-2 count for Sam Haggerty. And I really don't know why they wouldn't throw Haggerty in against a lefty. And a swing and a miss on that. And 0-4 for now for Sam Haggerty with three strikeouts. Just ugly work here. And that's going to do it here as the Yankees win 12-3. Sam Haggerty 0-4. for And a poor showing at the plate is right. Lost game, small momentum loss. And we have not fared well in these player lock games at all. But there, I mean, why are you throwing Sam Haggerty out there with 40 contact, 30 power against Garrett Cole? It makes no sense, let alone batting him in the two hole. So again, we fail to get a player boost and our snowflakes in this episode are just piling up. We are not playing good baseball right now. So we do split with the Yankees in a four game series and then split the first two against Washington. And now where it looks like we're going to get a key moment against the Washington Nationals when to take interleague series. So it's going to insert us here in the bottom of the seventh. Bases loaded with two away. And we'll just jump into this one. Oh, I thought we were batting. We're actually pitching. So Bryce Miller still on the mound with Ruiz up to bat. And the bases juiced as Seattle only leads one nothing in this game. We're getting some rough scenarios so far in this episode. And our play has just been falling as of late. We really need this one, especially against a poor team. So Kiebert Ruiz up, having a good season, as Washington expects him to take a step forward this year. So we're definitely going to throw somebody else in there. We're going to throw in Colin Poche, newly acquired from Tampa Bay, and see if he can get the job done here. Base is juiced. He just needs one, away. He just needs one out. And here he is. 
He's had three appearances in Seattle, still has not given up a run. And he doesn't really give up much hits as well, although lefties are hitting 500 against him in a limited sample size. So Poche starts him with a slider as he jumps ahead 0-1. Now a fastball right down the plate, and luckily that goes foul. That would have probably scored two, as Nationals would have took the lead on that one. And a curveball on the outside part of the plate is low for a 1-2 count now. Poche goes right back to the curveball as Ruiz fouls that one off. And an inside fastball gets Ruiz swinging and missing as the Nationals strand the base is loaded. Seattle still ahead 1-0 here as we head to the 8th inning. Tanner Rainey now on in relief for his 18th appearance. An even 4 ERA in 18 innings of work. And pretty solid numbers. He doesn't give up too many hits. Although the strikeout rate for a reliever you'd probably like to be a little bit better. Julio Rodriguez will lead us off 5 for 12 in the series with a home run and 4 RBIs. Maybe it seems he's getting going a little bit. And hopefully we can get something going with him a little bit as well. Look at that first pitch inside fastball. We have not hit well with Julio Rodriguez. And that definitely includes a player lock. I think that was the last episode with Julio Rodriguez player lock. A high fastball in there for a strike. Now 1-1 to the Seattle superstar. 2-1 count now to Julio Rodriguez. And he puts that one foul, a fastball. Pretty much right over the middle, early on that one. A full count now to Julio Rodriguez, working Tanner Rainey a little bit here. And he just gets on that fastball and fouls that one off. And a swing and a miss on the slider. Man, just a lot of strikeouts in this episode. I don't know if anyone noticed, but um, I do play on dynamic difficulty. So sometimes I do get it up there to legend, and once it hits legend... It's very difficult. I do have some good games with Legend, but overall, it's pretty tough. Now, Mitch Haniger up against Tanner Rainey, one away here. And that first pitch fastball misses away. The 1-0 now to the Seattle veteran. As that misses. I think Mitch Haniger probably the longest tenured Mariner on this team, I would have to imagine. And just late on that slider. Oh, I was late to read that one. That would have been a nice one to rip. It's now 2-1 to one to Hanniger. And then he swings at that one, the low slider away. And a good pitch there from Rainey. Now 2-2 two, two count. That slider nowhere near the plate. So slider misses up and away. Now full count to Hanniger. And that misses inside as Hanniger draws a walk here in the top of the eighth with Seattle up one run. And we are going to go to, to the bench here and bring in Sam Haggerty as a pinch runner. He'll probably just stick out in the outfield where Hanniger was. And that's what we need ha uh, Haggerty for. We really don't have any uh, guys with speed on our bench as Polanco looks at a first pitch fastball inside. Now the 1-0 to Polanco. And that misses high. Nice 2-0 count here for Polanco with a runner on first. Blanco fouls that one off, making it 2-1 against Tanner Rainey. Already 16 pitches in the inning. Polanco fouls off a fastball, now 2-2 count. As they'll check over at Haggerty at first base. And there's Joey Manessis at first. The Nationals actually offered him in a deal to us a couple weeks ago. Polanco fouls off another pitch as he stays alive here. All fastballs in this at-bat. And then he goes slider, and of course we should have expected it, but we're way out in front as Polanco goes down sitting with an ugly swing. Oh, man. That's the one you got to hit there. Now two away, Cal Raleigh up to the plate. And we got to get something going here. It's been an ugly showing in this episode. As we look at that fastball that gets in there for a first pitch strike. That one misses up and away. Now 1-1 to Cal Raleigh. At least we drew a walk. We got something going for us. Raleigh fouls off a slider. Now 1-2. As that one misses inside, bringing up a 2-2 count. Runner on first, two away, and the top of the eighth. 
Still a 2-2 count after a fouled off fastball. And that one misses away. So Kyle Raleigh works a full count. And Haggerty will be in motion. Full count here with two outs. And a swing and a miss by Raleigh. We should have seen that one coming. Rough going here by the Seattle Bats. And we're desperate. Only two hits in this game. And yet we still lead 1-0 going into the bottom of the eighth. So Haggerty will remain in right field. As Luis Garcia up to lead us off in the bottom of the eighth. We will leave Poche out for this batter. But then bring in our setup man, Matt Brash. Poche a first pitch strike. Fastball right down the middle. Slider finds the zone for a quick 0-2 count against Luis Garcia. That curveball misses. Garcia's not chasing that. And he fouls off that fastball. Still 1-2. He chops at that low curve. Crawford on the play at the throw to first. And France can't pick it on the low throw. So Garcia... We'll get on the leadoff man on base here for the Nationals, as they call that one an E6. And now we will throw Matt Brash out there. Good numbers, now his 10th appearance. Right, he's hitting him pretty well though, although the ERA, a very good figure there at 2-3-1. Now Lane Thomas on, run around first, no man away here in the bottom of the eighth. The Nationals looking to tie or take the lead. Thomas a first pitch swinging at that slider, 0-1 count. Chops that sinker foul. And another quick 0-2 count to a Washington hitter. That slurve chopped a short. Crawford fields to first for one. And Thomas does beat that one out. As Thomas will take first base and Garcia will head back to the bench. A DeMario Vargas on for the Nationals. Good speed here for the Nationals at first base with Thomas. And Brash will check him, but he gets back safely. First pitch here to Vargas, as that misses well beneath the zone. The 0-1. That's sinker way up in the zone. Although, good play there to snag the out. That could have been bad. That's Rojas there at second base. Now, Victor Robles on for the Nationals. And he looks ugly there on that first pitch slider away. And that's kind of how we've looked so far batting in this episode. I didn't even know the man was, <laughs> the man was in motion. I got to start playing with headphones. That's a disadvantage. I don't hear the, cal the calls because I can't play with my TV music on. My uh, I can't play with TV audio or else that'll just cut into the video. As Brash, a nice slur there gets Robles swinging and missing. For the third out. Seattle still up 1-0. As we head into the top of the ninth. Despite their putrid offensive display. So here comes Ty France. 0 for 2 in this game with a walk. And he was a walk off hero. In the last episode. With a home run against Atlanta. In extra innings. And there a great swing. As he ropes that one in the center. Cut off there by Robles. As he holds him to a single. 103 off the bat. And finally we got something going offensively. Ty France a little pumped up. He's had a decent year. Kind of up and down. But overall decent production from our first baseman. Now Dylan Moore up to bat in the lineup today. And offensively not the best showing so far. Although he's more so just a utility man for us. So Dylan Moore comes up to the plate, the number nine hitter for Seattle, on three straight balls to start the at-bat. And that fastball just clips inside as it's now 3-1 and one to Dylan Moore. And then he hits that inside fastball foul. And now a full count as Rainey works his way back into this one. Moore fouls off a fastball, so still a full count. Set at the seventh pitch of the at-bat. And Moore gives that a ride out to center. But Robles looks like he'll settle under it and make the catch. One away now. A strong throw in there. As it, does, it does get away. Although the second baseman there was able to recover it. But a good at-bat there by the number 9 hitter. As we have the top of the order now set to bat. Josh Rojas 0-4 in this one. 
And he started off the season tremendously well, but kind of coming back down to earth here as we should have expected and kind of did. That first pitch fastball low and away. As ugly as some of my swings may be, I, I do stay disciplined, and I got to give myself that. That slider well inside as it draws Rojas off the plate. Now another 2-0 count as Dylan Moore in the previous at-bat worked a 3-0 count. And Rojas grounds that one foul. So now 2-1. Tanner Rainey, his 38th pitch in this relief appearance. And that fastball misses away. So another good hitter's count here for the Mariners. Now 3-1 to Rojas. I see clubs that one foul. And another full count here to Seattle. Tanner Rainey trying to work out of this one. His 40th pitch. And Rojas smacks that one foul a little early on that one. And again, the seventh pitch of the at-bat. Rojas runs that one right up the middle as it hits Rainey. And he's going to reach safely for a base hit. Rainey got smacked. And they're going to call an E3 on that? Where was the error? And it says Seattle Mariners third error today. So that's, yeah, it's Washington's third error today. I don't know why it showed Seattle. But uh, the National is not, they're feeling not coming through. And that's probably why the Mariners were able to get on the board earlier. J.P. Crawford first pitch swinging as he uh, softly lines that one to first base caught by Manessis. And that'll bring up Taylor Trammell. I'm not sure why he's batting in the three hole. I think that's usually where Luke Rayleigh bats. And they just threw him in for this one. Should we just pinch it? Yeah, why not just pinch it for Luke Rayleigh here? Runners on. We got to go to our slugger in this situation. So Rainey will remain in the game. Despite getting rocked by that pitch. And despite over 40 pitches in this one. His stamina bar non-existent at this point. Now, a quick 0-2 count as Rayleigh looked at a fastball and then fouls off that slider. That slider misses down and away. Now, 1-2. Rayleigh batting over 300 with runners in scoring position so far this season. Another pitch fouled off. Still 1-2. And that slider misses inside. I thought that was going to hit Rayleigh. It's now an even count here, 2-2. Two, two. Aureli, another foul. And these Seattle Mariner hitters drawing at least seven pitches. Another seven pitch at bat. I think that's four in a row now. Or no, th three out of four. And really smashes that one to right field. That's going to go into the upper deck. A second level home run for Luke Rayleigh. Fresh off the bench. He worked the count full. And now three Mariners are going to score on a three-run blast to put them up 4-0. 411 foot bomb as Rojas and France will greet their teammate at home plate. That's what we wanted off the bench, and that's exactly what we got. The love a left-handed bomb. And look at that. Ex ex exit Velo, excuse me, of almost 110. 4-11 and just hits that second tier as Washington now will go to the bullpen. Kyle Vin Finnegan for his 15th appearance. He's been pretty solid here for the Nats so far. Perfect swing from Rayleigh. It just took us a little bit to get going here in this episode, but we finally delivered. Rodriguez looks at a first pitch strike, a nice slider with some late bite. And one of my biggest qualms with this game, I mean, aside from many obvious ones, but I just hate how Rodriguez fouls that one off. I hate how um, the AI manages the bullpen. Like, I'll be in games, it's a one-run game in the 7th or 8th, and they're going to, like, their long reliever, like a 62 overall, who just got shelled last game. Like, I don't get it. As Rodriguez swings in a miss, it's so difficult for me to talk and hit on this game, so I might have to be uh, a little more quiet when I'm in the zone there hitting. As Luke Rayleigh puts the Mariners up three more, they lead 4 nothing here in D.C., Luke Rayleigh will remain in left field as Andres Munoz, our closer, will come on for this one. 13 out of 15, although this is not a safe situation, 
a good ERA, a great strikeout rate, although lefty's hitting him very well, and that's probably his only downside so far this season. And C.J. Abrams, a lefty, will lead us off here. The Washington leadoff hitter, despite a very poor average. And Munoz comes into this one with, uh, like, no confidence bar. So he must have, oh, there we go. It took one strike to get it back. I wonder if he blew a save in his last game. So the 1-1, as he now one away. So a 2-1 count, and we're not going to have a confidence bar there unless we get another strike, as that one's fouled off. So now 2-2 to C.J. Abrams. And we still don't have it, as that fastball right over the plate fouled off. 100 miles per hour from Munoz. And that fastball inside, a quick full count here to C.J. Abrams. And he chops that sinker foul and stays alive. And that slider, he just looks at it, hangs right over the middle of the plate, and he'll go back to the dugout as Munoz records the first out of the inning on a backwards K. Stone Garrett now up 5 for 12 in the series, batting in the two hole here for Washington. That slider in there for a first pitch strike as Garrett looks at that one. Swings at that one, grounds it to second. Rojas fields, fires to first. And that's the second out of the inning. Washington now, they need four runs on one out as Joey Maness is two for four in this one, having a great slugging season thus far. Swing and a miss on that sinker. Good movement and velocity from Munoz. Now a fastball whizzes in the zone at 101, and Washington now down to their final strike. Fouled off. Manessis fouls one off, and then a fastball misses high. Now 1-2. And he swings and misses on that slider, and Seattle's going to win this one. It looked a little too tight for comfort. Bases loaded there in the eighth inning, but Washington, a home run from Luke Raley. Pitching staff got the shutout. Nice finish for a good win, and we get three flames out of this one. Luke Raley, a three-run bomb off the bench to propel Seattle to victory in this game. Desperate to get something going, even though Washington's not a good baseball club. Still, we want to take the interleague series, and hopefully this gets us going back on the right track. We get three flames in this one, and as it's been, our snowflake turns to fire, and we'll continue on here. Now, Houston, we lose one. Looks like we, we took two out of three against Houston, which I'll certainly take. Now it looks like we have a key moment here against the Angels. So we're up 5-3. Runners on first and second, and we need two outs. So we'll just go ahead and jump into this one. Mike Trout on second, Brandon Drury on first. And we were up 5-0 going into this inning, but Los Angeles three runs here in the top of the ninth. Bryce Miller, very good day, eight and a third, six strikeouts. And I wonder if, yeah, I guess Munoz is pitching. So they just brought Munoz in for this one to get two outs. The tying run on first here to Mickey Moniak. And he pops that one up, and I think that's going to be an infield fly as it is. So one pitch here for Munoz and one quick out. Now just one out away from preserving this win for Seattle. That's going to bring up Luis Renjifo. The last chance here for the Angels. And that first pitch sinker misses away. Renjifo on an eight-game hit streak, looking to extend that in this final at-bat. Back-to-back sinkers, that one does find the zone. Now 1-1 to Renjifo. Fouls off that inside fastball, and now the Angels down to their last strike. And he looks at that fastball high in the zone, 102 miles per hour. He never had a chance. Munoz, his 14th save of the season as Seattle hangs on here despite a late Los Angeles rally. Close it out for the win. We'll get one more flame for that one. And Bryce Miller, probably one of his best pitching performances, although he kind of did unravel there in the ninth inning. So we pin a loss on a division rival. Success. I think we're going to let the good times keep rolling here. Looks like we're getting some good baseball going. Took that series against Houston. 
So we do take that series against the Angels. We lose the first game against Oakland and then win. So we split. And now we get a couple more trade offers. Matt Moore, 34 years old. 78 overall, pretty good. But we're not going to trade a young third baseman with B potential. So we'll decline that. And we'll keep it. I didn't know by declining that one trade, it would close us out. And now it's saying don't drop serious to struggling club. So it's the bottom of the ninth here. Runners on first and second. We're just called into another like one, two out save situation. So Andres Munoz in the game for this one. We need one out. Zach Geloff up to bat. We're up 7-5. So let's see if Munoz can pull away another save here. That's Zach Geloff, two for four in this one, batting third in this Oakland lineup. A loose ball there. Raleigh fires to third and just making it in there. I'm not sure the base runner is. But that was just a second late, a wild pitch there from Munoz. And now the game tying run on second. And that's popped up, and that's probably just going to do it here from Ricky Henderson Field. Raleigh corrals that one, and another quick victory here as we stave off the Athletics and take this series 2-1. Bryce Miller, another win. And we get another flame in this one. Close it out for the win. I like these nice, easy situations as opposed to being in there, bases thrown in there, bases loaded, one, one away, game on the line. These, these ones are a lot more relaxing, especially when we don't have to bat. I could just close out a one or two out game all, all day. So we're getting hot here, hopefully. I think we're back to over 500 baseball. Now a series against KC, we take the first game, take the second game, and we're throwing back into scouting here. Okay, so we sweep KC, and we lose the first game there against Chicago. Now they want us to call up Blake Hunt, a catcher. We already have three catchers on the big league squad, so I don't know why they would want us to do that. Only D potential, 63 overall. We're going to pass on Blake Hunt for the moment. We take the second there against Chicago. And it looks like they're going to throw us here in game three of this four-game set. Finish strong from a morale-boosting win. As we're down one, up to bat with runners on first and second, just one away. So here we are, back in Seattle, down 2-1 against the Chicago White Sox. We got Sebi Zavala, a backup catcher up to, up to the plate with runners on first and second. Jimmy Lambert out there for the White Sox. Chicago currently the second worst team in the AL. So of course Seattle would like to get a home win here. Zavala looks at a first pitch ball, fastball low out of the zone. And a swing and a miss on the slider ahead of that one. Good late movement. A fastball misses high. Now 2-1 count. And late on that circle change right over the plate. A little rusty. Zavala fouls off an inside fastball. Now a 2-2 count. Curveball misses low and inside. Now a full count here with Dylan Moore on deck. Zavala. A little early on that fastball as he fouls that one off. Now the eighth pitch of the at-bat for Sebi Zavala. Fouls off another one. A little early on these fastballs from Lambert. And this is probably where he tries uh, to pull the string on you. And that fastball just gets in there. That was a really good pitch by Lambert. Zavala, we got to be a little more aggressive there with two strikes. And I was kind of thinking off speed there, and the fastball surprised me. A good pitch there from Jimmy Lambert. So now the number nine hitter, Dylan Moore, getting the start in this one. That first pitch skips away from the catcher as each Mariner will advance. Now two runners in scoring position here in the bottom of the seventh, down one. A wild pitch from Lambert gives Moore a 1-0 count now. And Dylan Moore's just going to pop that one up. Late on the fastball, Andrew Vaughn there at first to collect it. And the Mariners strand two, and running, uh, two runners in scoring position as we now head to the top of the eighth. Leading off will be Max Stasi. And now Brian Wu still on. Two runs allowed here as he starts the eighth inning. Only at 69 pitches. Pretty efficient in this one. Is that fastball? According to the umpire misses, although it looked like it had a good spot there inside. That high fastball does find the zone. Now 1-1 to 
to Max Stasi. The 1-1. One, one. And that sinker hammered to right field in the proximity of Mitch Hanniger, who settles under and makes the catch there at the tip of the warning track. So one away, and Oscar Colas, 4 for 9 in the series with a pair of home runs up to the plate. First pitch slider, Colas hammers that one to right field. Hanniger getting some work here as he records another put out there in right field. Now two away for Brian Wu, staying efficient in this one. Lennon Sosa, the number nine hitter up now, looking to avoid the one, two, three inning. That fastball fouled away, now a 1-0 count. The 0-1, that sinker hangs over the middle of the plate Another foul off there from Sosa. So the 0-2, Wu, one strike away from a 1-2-3 inning. And a very efficient one at that. Now the 1-2. That changeup misses low. Now the count all even at 2. And that high heat finds the zone as Sosa looks at that one. And the White Sox go down 1-2-3. The Mariners set to get the top of their lineup up in the bottom of the eighth. Tim Hill, the southpaw for the Chicago White Sox on. And it's not good. It hasn't been good so far. 15.43 ERA on for his eighth appearance. Righties and lefties each hitting at least 400 against him. And a low strikeout rate. Josh Rojas on to lead us off. One for three in this one with a double. Five for 12 in this series with four doubles. So he's been quite effective here against the White Sox. And a first pitch fastball just gets in there at 91 miles per hour. Rojas way too early on that. Now the 0-1. And Rojas sends that one foul early on the slider. So a quick 0-2 hole here for the Seattle leadoff man. Rojas fouls off an outside slider and then looks at an inside fastball. So now 1-2 count. And he looks at that fastball inside as well and works it back even. And that sinker way up in the zone almost clips Rojas as he has some words there for the Chicago pitcher Tim Hill. Now full count to the Seattle leadoff man. And that fastball misses away from the plate and Rojas draws a walk. The tying runner on first with no outs here in the bottom of the eighth. Saying go to a substitution, Rojas is a 45 speed. And yeah, it's probably a good move, right? I mean, you got to go back to Sam Haggerty. Second is his primary position. So pinch runner here, Sam Haggerty now on. And replacement of Josh Rojas. J.P. Crawford now up, our home run leader at this point, I believe still. Although he's not good against lefties. He does rope that base hit up the middle as Haggerty is not going to test that one. Oh my goodness. And he's, I can't believe what I just saw. I've never seen the AI do that. I tested the throw to third, but it called him back. Wow. So off that JP Crawford base hit, Sam Haggerty was thrown out at second. I was going to try and test the throw. So I hit third. But I guess the center fielder there, Luis Robert, caught on. And now all flustered here as Luke Rayleigh just beats that one out. So we avoid the double play, but wow, that was a tough break there. We had runners on first and second, no away. But Sam Haggerty, the pinch runner, got thrown out going back to second. So now Julio Rodriguez up for us. And he gets a base hit there to center field. We are going to test the center fielder here as Rayleigh now to third base. Runners on the corners now for the Mariners. And I'm still flustered off that Haggerty, um, Haggerty throw it at second. That probably would have tied the game or maybe even put us ahead. Now Mitch Hanniger tasked with tying it up here. Runners on the corners. Tim Hill still on the mound. Hanniger fouls that first pitch fastball away. Now 0-1. One for three in this one, although the batting average dipping 
Now down to 216 for the Seattle veteran. And Mitch Hanniger is just going to ground that one to short. And they'll get the out there at second. A base running blunder from Sam Haggerty prevents Seattle from taking the lead in this one as they still trail heading into the ninth inning. Two to one. And we will just keep Brian Wu out here to start the ninth. Why not? First pitch there to Andrew Benintendi. Misses a cutter inside. The 1-0 to Benintendi. Fouls that off. Dylan Moore giving chase. And he's just late to get there. So 1-1 one, one now to the Chicago leadoff hitter. Chops that up the middle as Crawford can't stretch out on the diving attempt. So a leadoff single here from Andrew Benintendi here in the top of the ninth. So the Mariners are going to go to the bullpen here. Eight very good innings from Brian Wu. And as it's been the case for him this season, we just can't get him any run support. I think he's 2-5 and five coming into this one set for another loss. Unless we can tie it up or take the lead in the bottom of the ninth. We're going to send out there our closer, Andres Munoz, with a runner on first, no man away here in the top of the ninth. Try to preserve this one run lead and give us a chance there in the bottom of the ninth to win it. First pitch here. Swing and a miss as they do send the runner. And like we saw maybe last game or the game before, I just was not ready to make the throw. I got to be more aware on those opportunities. As usually in game, you know, the catcher will call out or the player will call out that they're stealing. But um, I don't have game audio, so maybe I got to get some headphones here. Now 0-2 to Nicky Lopez. And that inside fastball fouled away. And that's going to hit him on the elbow. Right on the elbow brace as Nicky Lopez takes first. And our runners on first and second. Munoz comes out of the bullpen and hits a man. Eloy Jimenez now up for the White Sox. That first pitch sinker fouled away. Now the 0-1. Sinker misses beneath the zone. It evened up at 1-1. Jimenez hitting over 300 with runners in scoring position. That sinker, uh, slider misses away. Or I'm sorry, low. Now a 2-1 count. And he pops up that fastball. Cal Raleigh settles underneath. And that'll be out number one here in the top of the ninth. Now a double play ball, certainly on the mind of Munoz and the Mariners. That brings up Luis Robert Jr. One for three in this one with a double. Batting cleanup for the White Sox. And that slider in that same spot we saw in the previous at bat misses just low. Swing and a miss on the sinker at 96 miles an hour. Evened up at one. Sinker misses away. Now hitters count for Luis Robert. And he lines that one to left field. They're going to send the runner. Luke Rayleigh fires home. Let's see. Play at the plate. And Andrew Penintendi just gets in there as the White Sox double their lead. Now 3-1. Andrew Vaughn up to the plate. And still you got to hope for that double play ball. That sinker just gets in there, and if Vaughn uh, put that one in play, that could have definitely been a double play ball. And that sinker, he takes the opposite way, and that's going to go all the way into the corner. One run will score. They'll send the other runner from third. Haggerty on the relay throw. Play at the plate, and he's safe. So three runs in the matter of two batters here, as Andrew Vaughn, a two-run double, puts Chicago up 5-1. And we're definitely going to have to go to the bullpen now. We'll just throw up Stanek and Con Poche. Tough break here for Munoz out of the pen. After he, he had a two strike count on Nicky Lopez earlier in the inning and then plunked him. And after that, it was just all downhill, really, as a quick 0 2 count to Yoan Moncada. That fastball right over the plate fouled away. Slider misses inside, now 1-2. Good eye by Moncada, looking at that inside fastball. Now even up, 2-2 count. Slider misses away as Moncada draws a full count here. Chops that sinker foul. 
Another full count. We know it's a fastball as Makata gets good wood on that, but it's foul. So we'll do it again here. The ninth pitch of the at-bat. And he gets him looking on that one. Mankata thought he was getting the walk. But that high fastball just gets in there. Munoz already at 23 pitches. And we're going to go to the bullpen here. No need to keep him laboring out there. Already done four runs. Kind of unraveled here. And we'll throw, throw in Colin Poche. For his sixth game of the season. I think just the fifth. Fourth or fifth here with the Mariners. Poche, first pitch strike as Stassi fouls that one away. The 0-1 curveball just clips the zone there. Now a quick 0-2 count to the Chicago catcher. Fouls off that nice curveball well beneath the zone. Still 0-2. And what a nice fastball there. Clips the inside part of the plate as he gets Stassi looking. A nice two-run double there from Andrew Vaughn. Extended this lead for Chicago. They now lead 5-1 going into the bottom of the ninth. We need four and we need a, a late rally. Jorge Polanco will lead us off one for two with a home run in this one. OPS up to 833. 12 homers. And look at that uh, sky in the background. Some good views here in Seattle. Polanco first pitch swing and missing at a sinker. Tim Hill still out there for his second inning of work. <laughs> I love, I actually did swing at that one just to show how my plate vision is right now, but luckily the game gave us a ball on that animation. That sinker misses away. It's crazy here how in the show, like you really can be just hot and cold. Kind of as in a, a real life MLB player. And that one just misses the shin of Polanco as he skedaddles out of the way there. Cal Raleigh on deck, a 3 1 count here. To Jorge Polanco. And he rips that one into the gap. Nice piece of hitting there by Polanco. He's going to round first, head for second. Robert throws it into the cutoff man. As Polanco, a leadoff double here. Almost gets hit on the shin there. And then ropes the next pitch out to the gap. As he leads it off with a double. Now Kyle Raleigh on for the Mariners. Two for three in this game. First pitch cutter off the plate. 1-0 count Raleigh. 2 for 3 as I said with two singles. OPS up to 738. Average at 235. Kind of where you expect it to be. Although you uh, hope Raleigh could slug a little bit better here. That slider just tucks in at the top of the zone. A fastball misses up. Now 2-1. That sinker misses inside. And another nice hitter's count here. And Raleigh will line that into center field. Polanco rounds third, heads for home. And Polanco's going to score. A good start to the ninth inning here. Seattle plates one, Cal Raleigh an RBI single. And now we only trail by three. Chicago is going to go to the closer here, Garrett Crochet. The southpaw. Lefty's only hitting 087 against him. A good strikeout rate, respectable ERA. And he's been 17 out of 19. A good promising young closer here for the Chicago White Sox. Mitch Garver is going to come on here as a pinch hitter. 377 batting average over 1,000 OPS. Just ridiculous numbers. And hits lefties incredibly well. So he'll come on for Sebi Zavala. Runner on first here against Crochet. First pitch swing and a miss on the high heat. 98 miles per hour out of the pen from Garrett Crochet. So a fastball misses away. Changeup misses low. 2-1 count now to Garver. He pops that one up foul as the right fielder gives chase, but luckily it drops before Colas can get to it. So an even 2-2 count here to Garver off the bench. And Garver will give that a ride out to left field. Benintendi looking up, and that's going to go. Mitch Garver, a pinch hit home run in the bottom of the ninth. We got a pinch hit home run with Luke Rayleigh. A couple games ago, or maybe last game, and now Garver off the bench as a pinch hit home run. Seattle now just within one run. Entered the inning down 5-1. Now, real quick, it's 5-4. Still no outs here in the inning. 
That circle change just hung up there in the zone. And Garver, too much power. And he's rocking that. Garver's just absurd power hitting continues for us. And we knew that one was headed out right away. Not the longest homer, 356. But the exit velo and the arc on that one got it out of here. Now Dylan Moore up for Seattle. First pitch swing and a miss, a fastball right down the middle. Four for six in the series with a pair of doubles and four ribbies. You like to see that from our rotational platoon play, our rotational um, utility man. And he pokes that one up the middle, a base hit from Dylan Moore. Seattle got a rally going here. Three men have already come around to score. And now we have our leadoff man. Still no outs for the Mariners here. Tying run on first. And that brings up Sam Haggerty batting 591 here so far in a limited sample size. Up against a lefty, which is what we're talking about. And that player lock game, we went out there against Garrett, um, Garrett Cole. And we were, did not do too well. 0 for, 3 with, um, 0 for 4 with 3 strikeouts. I don't know if you just saw it there when it popped up. 1.595 OPS so far. For Sam Haggerty. Just absurd. We would love to see him get something going here. And possibly put more into running uh, scoring position. 1-0 count after they checked on more. Haggerty swings and misses at that low changeup. And then he'll check the bat to see if, uh, if everything's in order here. That was kind of an ugly swing. Now the 1-1 to Sam Haggerty. And that slider misses just off the plate. Another hitter's count here for the Mariners. And that fastball, they're going to say, clips the plate. A little, um, even probably more outside than the last pitch we just saw. So now 2-2 to Sam Haggerty. Haggerty fouls off a changeup. Still 2-2 here. And he'll pop that one up to center as Luis Robert settles and records the out there. So... Eric Crochet records Chicago's first out of the inning and a double play ball, and they're out of this one. That brings up J.P. Crawford, 16 homers so far. I think this is game 70, so a very, very good pace for our shortstop. Not good against lefties, however, and that's what we got going on in this situation. A first pitch pitch out. Now 1-0 count to Crawford. That changeup finds his own. Now 1-1. And this is definitely a steal situation, but I just get so nervous stealing in this game or even taking a lead. You can get picked off so easy, especially against a lefty. As a good eye there from Crawford, that changeup just misses. Now 2-1. And they're going to call that fastball strike. Some inconsistent calls here from the umpire, but... What are you going to do? Even now, 2-2. Two, two. And that fastball well away. And now a full count here with Luke Rayley on deck. Do you send the runner here in the full count? And that's what I'm talking about. It's just so easy to get picked off in this game. It's ridiculous. It's, it's not even worth taking leads. I don't see. I don't know what I'm doing there. Like, come on. He's staring him down. Why doesn't he just react? Like, I don't know. The base running, not so much the base running, but like I said, stealing in this game is just super difficult. And just like that, we'll look at that fastball. And this, uh, this rally attempt is going to come to a close as we do lose the series against Chicago. We can't be doing that against a bottom tier team, not only in the AL, but in the entire league. So we got the snowflake, couldn't produce a comeback win. We had a nice rally there, but ultimately cut short as Garrett Crochet records another save. Home run there for Mitch Garver to give us some late life, but not enough as that inning prior, we kind of imploded. And I think uh, Chicago only six hits in that game, 13 for Seattle, and we still pick up the loss. So the flame going to go back to the snowflake as we failed that key moment. Now, I think only two games above 500. As actually, we do split that series against Chicago It was as it was a four-game set. And so now we get another key moment here against Texas, beat rival to climb division ladder. And we split the first two games here. They're going to throw us up 
in the top of the eighth, 1-0 ball game. As right now, we do sit at 38-35, and 35, and I think that's going to do it here in this episode. Third in the AL West, two and a half out of the wild card, so not a bad spot. As we're now at, what, game, game 74, so... Just about halfway through this season already in this March to October series. And um, it's been up and down, but I think we're going to come around and start playing some better baseball here. I'll just kind of go through the league leaders at this point as we close this episode. And I just want to say thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Um, thank you for being a part of this March to October Seattle Mariners series here on MLB The Show 24. Keep uh, an eye out for my... I'm going to have a realistic, you know, rebuild franchise up within the next few days maybe that by this weekend i think um a new roster is going to be released opening day rosters and that's what i'll probably start my franchise with um and then we'll kind of go from there so that's kind of going to take priority over this march to october series i'm definitely going to keep this march to october series going for you know a couple seasons at least and then we'll kind of look forward to uh the franchise but this is where i'm going to leave you folks as i said thank you so much for watching as always, everybody, it's been real and be well. I'll see you next time.